you know, we, I, I don't tend to pay as much attention as people might think I would want to, to, uh, um, uh, legal cases, but Donald Trump has had a rough time in the past couple of weeks where like he found somebody uh, who was going to pay for a bond for him to sort of like uh, theoretically be able to, um, not have to pay his 400 and probably $500 billion worth of, of, of fines in, in New York state. But it seems like that bond, um, I guess, uh, issuer may not have the money either and uh, <laughs> may get rejected. But also, um, he, he has a greater than zero chance of like being convicted uh, in a criminal court case with this hush money. Uh, uh, update us on this. Well, it's 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 going to start on Monday. So this is the beginning of the first criminal trial of Donald Trump. And everybody should understand he's got to be there every day. This isn't one that he can skip if he wants to. You, the defendant has to show up for a tr criminal trial. Now, he's pretending like he thinks that's really great and that, you know, he's going to make a lot of money and he's a martyr. He's calling himself Nelson Mandela. He said he's he be honored to be the, to be the Nelson. I know it's, it's really incredible. So ridiculous. I know. I mean, it's so absurd. But, you know, he's he if you read as I do, because it's my job and, uh, you know, I'm, I envy those of you who don't have to do this, read his truth social feed every day. He is in a complete panicked frenzy on there about this case. There is no way you can read that and not see that this is a guy who is at, terrified or at the very least, you know, panicked on, in some major way about, you know, something that's going on in the legal case because it he is on there, you know, practically every 15 minutes with these long diatribes and, you know, just completely insane stuff. Uh, you know, the Biden Justice Department weaponizing the DOJ, blah, blah, blah. And the judge and going after the judge and going after, well, as we know, he's gone after his, the judge's family. And, you know, how dare they put a gag order on me, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see that he goes, you know, he'll go until like 1.30 in the morning. And then at 6 in the morning, he starts up right again. <laughs> so, you know, it's just from the moment he goes to bed until the moment he, and, and the minute he wakes up, he's he's fretting about this and for good reason this case which everybody said at can the i just well, wait, interrupt you because you 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 wrote and I, I can't remember which piece it was but uh the uh, one of yours that you read that like don't know why he's doing this it might be like just sort of like uh like self-soothing like a like <laughs> yeah. a thing like you know when a baby has a pacifier but yeah. it's also he doesn't drink uh and <laughs> you don't want to be uh mm -hmm. hitting the uh the adderall that maybe <laughs> in the past has right. been a, a crutch for him. So it really is like uh, Truth Social really could be just sort of like where y you or I might have a, a you know, a, a, a glass of wine oh, or, oh, oh. Uh, or, or a, a, a bourbon. It's he therapeutic. Just, he just goes yeah. on there and just... Well, don't therapists say journal, right? Get all of your feelings out. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what True Social is. It's like his personal blog. I mean, who it else is. uses that thing? He's also it watching is. the uh, the stock uh, that, uh, yeah. that that is reliant on Truth Social just drop like yeah. a, like a rock. All right, but so he's terrified of this. All right, so go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and and the, the, I just have to just say one thing: the kind of thing that he does to self soothe, which is what I, I flagged That's in my is. teeth with stuff like you know, he says it'll just be some outburst, you know. Biden trials, you know, election <laughs> interference, you know, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, you're like, okay, you know, he just he had to blurt that out and right. he just he types it in all caps, you know, so that's why I thought, you know, this is some, he's doing this, this is some kind of a, a personal sort of therapeutic exercise for him. And I guess for his readers, because, you know, if you read Truth Social, one of the fun things to me is that the comments, they don't actually comment on Truth Social like you would see on Twitter or another social media platform. It's all memes. It's just memes, pictures, memes, just that's all they do. His people don't actually say anything. They also self-soothe with some kind of what they think is some kind of clever meme, you know, Donald Trump is Jesus, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's hilarious. It's a really weird, weird, it's a weird community. Let's just put it that way, unsurprisingly. Anyway, yes, he's terrified. And, and he should be terrified because in the beginning, 
I think everybody thought that this case was kind of, eh, you know, it's just Stormy Daniels, old news, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of a stretch legally that it, this is going to be criminal and blah, blah, blah. As it turns out, as we've seen the rulings come down from the judge and the appellate courts, which could have put, you know, and 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 then, and also in the in the federal court, which said no, you're not moving this over to the feds, which is what Trump wanted to do because he felt like he could manipulate that, but would get a better jury, I think, is what the reasoning behind that. Um, but the the case, as it turns out, and as most of the legal analysts now looking at what we know about it and what seems to have been seen by the judges that have looked at the at the case. It's actually a pretty good case, and it, it it seems to be a pretty simple case to make to a jury, at least from what I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just repeating what I hear from a variety, and it's not just one or two, you know, MSNBC lawyers. I mean, this is something that you, you hear from others as well, that it's actually a pretty good case, and he's terrified because what this case is going to be discussing is one of the things, the last things he wants to be talking about right now which is the fact that he had this relation, you know, had this, uh, what do you want to call it? I guess it, it wasn't an affair exactly. He had this, um, you know, moment in sexual uh, trist. Well, you know, trist I, I think it was, uh, I, I, it was, it was, I'm, their uh, relationship, I don't know if it was a, a, a sexual ongoing, but I, he, he tried oh, to get her true. on the yeah. he tried to get her on the apprentice I, I mean i yeah. i that's know true. this true. through uh through stories that i have heard <laughs> that have been you know people, were, were saying, people who had first hand <laughs> conversations with some of the principals prior to donald trump ever running for office but go ahead yeah yeah no i think you're uh, that's absolutely true and and you know he which would suggest he wanted to have an ongoing relationship with her right i mean he wanted to get her on the apprentice or it could just be we had one great night and i felt like i wanted to do a solid afterwards <laughs> it could be <laughs> call me sentimental also, <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, call me, call me said yeah trump that's very sentimental um but he's also one of the witnesses in this case is Karen McDougal, with whom he did have a long-term affair, or at least it went on for many months and it was something that she considered at the time to be a serious affair in around that same period. So, you know, what people are going to see, going to be reminded of is that Trump, when his wife Melania had for within months, of, you know, had, staying at home with her newborn son, his newborn son, uh, was out having affairs with Playboy Playmates and and um, and porn actresses. So, you know, he does not want this to be what people are talking about. And yet, you know, he'll be out there saying it's all a witch hunt and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, you know that this is, ta he knows what tabloid, he knows what the power of tabloid media, right? I mean, he right. lived it for decades. That was his bread and butter before he got into politics. And he knows what the power of that is. And he knows how much people are going to eat this up. And they are. So on a political basis, he's, he's you know, obviously concerned about that. But on a legal basis, I think he knows they've got him dead to rights on, you know, the only question here will be whether the judge and the jury decide that this, this legal theory that they have in which what they're saying is, is that Trump paid hush money to her. We know that's true. I mean, they're signed checks and he signed them in the Oval Office. I mean, you know, he he paid the money and we know that he paid the money to shut them up. And they're going to have David Pe Pecker, who was the head of um, who was the, the chairman National of the Inquirer, uh, right? National Inquirer and his and his top uh, executive as well will be testifying to this deal that they had made with Donald Trump called catch and kill where any of these stories that came up they were the national Enquirer was going to buy them up get the people to sign ndas and then not actually print the story and keep in keep it off at least until the until after the campaign <clears throat> and that's key because by having that deal about the campaign and about you know trump's going to try and say well you know of course i didn't want melania to find out right. you know i mean we have a lovely marriage i didn't want to hurt her you know i mean he'll say that but the reality is, is that the, the real reason behind this was to keep it out of the campaign. And the timing of the Stormy Daniels stuff happening around the Access Hollywood tape coming out is also key. Because in the at the end of the day, what Alvin Bragg is saying is that he violated 
campaign finance laws by doing this. He's being charged with state crimes that have to do with um, phoning up financial records, which he did. <laughs> and golly, there's a $450 million fraud case out there right now that he's been found guilty of, of phonying up financial records. So it's not like this is a one-off. I mean, obviously the guy was doing this in, in many other ways as well. So he doesn't have any credibility on that. So at, at, at the end of the day, what they're going to prove is that he did this he violated campaign finance laws in, you know, in the, in the middle of this heavy, very fraught uh, presidential campaign by doing this hush money. And that is what is the that's what the felony is that um, he's being charged with. All right. I, uh, so we have the, the, the political sort of silo and the, and, and the legal silo in terms of the jeopardy that's facing him. On the, uh, I want to come back to the legal one in just a moment because uh, and talk about the fact that somebody's already gone to jail for this. Yes. For this uh, within this case, which exactly I think is really, the, w- 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 which is w- which is why he's probably freaking out on some level. Um, on the on the in terms of legal jeopardy, in terms of the political uh, jeopardy, I wonder he's been doing a lot more God squaddy stuff. Oh, yeah. As of late, like this early in the campaign he's really it's been like he always did some of it there's no doubt about it but it seems like he's dedicated a lot of time in the past month or so to the god squad stuff and um i i wonder he's if calling that is election he's calling election day christian visibility day <laughs> i mean i wonder if it's if it is a function of like he's worried that all this stuff that might come out, and again, it's going to be in the sort of like primary source of news that people get, like these 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 sheets yep. in the in the uh, supermarket. If he's worried that um, he's worried that that's the constituency he's got to worry about, that maybe he's already sort of like, but I, I wonder if that's actually like that's more. I don't think those people are shakable. I don't think like the more either. that he's, you know, the more that he's they found to be like, you know, having done slimy things that was then he's redeemed himself. And he sort right. of did for these Christians. I mean, he, he gave them everything they wanted. He's uh, being prosecuted for his or our sins. I mean, yeah, you can interchange in it. Um, but let's talk about the fact that, that somebody already went to jail for this. Um, yeah. Uh, his former lawyer, um, uh, I can't even remember the guy's first name, Michael uh, Cohen, Michael Cohen, uh, Michael and Cohen also, we should be clear. He's a liar. Yeah. Um, he's a liar. He lied on service of, of Donald Trump. I mean, I, uh, I, well, that's what he's going to say. He's going to say, yeah, I lied. I was working for Donald Trump. He told me to lie and I lied. Which is you amazing know, and- too, because Weisselberg just went to jail for five months. He's going to Rikers for the fraud case for, yep. for not being uh, honest with the jury. Uh, yep. A separate case, but still just like how many of these people are going to jail surrounding Trump? Why is it taking yeah. Trump? Why is it taking so long? We're three years out from him being the sitting president, but Cohen went to jail five years ago. Why is it taking so long to get to Trump in this case? Uh, well, uh, there's a reason for it, and that is that it was originally a federal case, and Cohen was was he was convicted on federal charges. Um, okay. And so the the feds sat on it. Gee, I wonder how that happened. Uh, they sat on the case. They, in fact, Cohen says that you know they went after him, you know, because Trump was president. I mean, he was, you know, he was targeted by the Sessions and then Barr Justice Department because he had, um, you know, confessed to lying on behalf of Trump. So they went hard after him. And then they sat on the case and, and decided not to charge it. Nobody really understands exactly what happened there why they didn't because the federal charge is is good it's basically it's the basis of alvin bragg's case except that he's bringing it under state laws about financial crimes but it's the same case and the same facts in the case and many of the facts were developed in that federal case you know there's a whole story about this guy named mark pomerantz who worked for the federal case and then went and and you know uh, I guess consulted with Alvin Bragg and whatever. Trump talks about him all the time. They brought him in. Biden brought him in. He brought him in. My Pomerantz, they brought him in. He does this big thing. It's meaningless. But nonetheless, he's the one who thought that, you know, 
he he has revealed a number of these these uh, sort of issues within the case that that somehow in the federal case never really made it. So that's why that happened. Um, and Bragg, I think, he was reluctant to take on the case when he took the when he became Manhattan District Attorney. And you recall, he said, "Yeah, well, you know, we're not we don't really see it." I'm not sure what happened there. But somehow or another, something convinced him that this was worth doing. And I cannot imagine that he thinks he's going to lose this case. Why would you take a case against Donald Trump that you didn't feel was really strong? Right. Uh, because if, if it goes bad, uh, I mean, he's you're, ruined. Uh, yes, yeah, you're done. That's, I you're mean, done. Every, yeah, you're, you're totally cooked. And, and he didn't have to, right? I mean, this was a case that had sort of been sitting there, it had yep. been on the simmer. He didn't have to take it. So, you know, I mean, maybe I'm, I'm being too optimistic about, you know, a, 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 by, by all accounts, Alvin Bragg's a very smart guy. <laughs> and is not somebody who is sort of was sort of ever a big you know kind of partisan flag waver. Um, so I, I suspect that this case they figure when they finally got you know pulled all the evidence together. And by the way, there's a ton of documented evidence on this. They've got emails from everybody. What is they, the what is the what is the state what is the potential penalty? Like I mean, uh, on a federal uh, the, the the federal crime that Cohen's um, uh, went to jail for is, is one thing, but can can he can Trump theoretically go to prison uh, in this case, or would it I be fines? So. I think he can go to prison for it, but I don't think he will. Uh, well, first of all, what will happen is that he they will immediately appeal it, and he will be released if he's found guilty. They'll immediately re appeal it. Well, and history he'll be will absolve time. me then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and, you know, that'll take for go, you know, well beyond the election. I right. mean, there's no way tr they're going to haul Trump off to jail before the election. That's not going to happen. But I think that there are, you know, I, to be honest with you, I'm not totally sure what the penalties are. But the fact that he if he's found guilty, uh, you know, if uh, in a criminal case. Uh, I think it should have some salience um, to voters, but you know, like you, I don't think the Christians are the the should say the Christians. That's a pretty broad brush. The, the conservative evangelical Christians, who you know, the MAGA cult, uh, which consists of uh, the you know, I don't know, something like eighty percent of white evangelicals are in the MAGA cult. Um, those people, I don't think they're movable either. They're just they're not going to do it. And uh, you know, what you're looking at are are there any sort of what, you know, what you might think of as being sort of normie Republicans who still have some sense that maybe it's not a great idea to have a criminal in the White House? I don't know. I mean, I don't know who, the, I don't understand those people either. So, right. you know, I'm, I'm kind of stumped on that. But, you know, it'll be very, very interesting to see. And this thing's going to go on for a while. You know, we were talking earlier before we, we came on air about the OJ trial. And, you know, that thing was just, I mean, that was the ca a case, of course, it was televised, and this one won't be. But nonetheless, you'll have reporters rushing out every five minutes to, you know, report on what's going on in the case. And Trump will be making statements, I'm sure, every day on the courthouse steps and in the hallways and whatever, uh, because he'll be present there. Um, and you'll get a full narration from him as he flies off to rallies after his day in court, which is going to be kind of interesting because he'll be all worked up. I'm sure it's going to be like late era Lenny Bruce, um, uh, shows his, uh, uh, yeah. his, where Lenny Bruce was on, on trial for, uh, for, uh, the words he was saying in, in I think it was in Chicago and he would just go uh -huh. up on stage and start reading the transcripts from the, uh, the trials. <laughs> exactly. And it, he exactly. wasn't, uh, that wasn't particularly funny at that stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. but, uh, Heather, thank you so much for uh, catching oh, us pleasure. up with this stuff. And folks, um, so uh, much. Uh, we will link uh, to Heather's pieces in uh, salon.com about uh, about these and more. And also you can check out Hullabaloo. Um, uh, Digby, as always, thank you so much for coming on and we'll see you soon. Thanks for having me. You guys have a great weekend. Thanks. You too, you too Heather.